In this video, we're going to use StatCrunch to find the area that lies left to a z-score, also compute a z-score in StatCrunch. Okay, so basically here's the problem and some of the answers. Let's get StatCrunch going. Basically what, what I need to do is just go to Stat, Calculators, and go to Normal. So a normal calculator. That's the only thing we need here. And we just need to put this information in. So this is the standard normal distribution with the mean at zero and these are the z uh, standard deviations z minus one minus two minus three etc alright so we leave these pieces of information and all we're looking for is the probability of x being less than or equal to because uh, when you read these normal the areas to the left then uh, is, excuse me the area is less than or equal to or to the left so we put in the value that they say z is minus 0 0.14, and it's always less than or equal to, that's the area left than that, and then that would be 0 0.44433, and there's that. So it's basically pretty easy. This input here is always the z-score, so to the left of 0 0.14, that matches up, and you can continue to put whatever you want in there, 1.74. Okay, they match up, so it's pretty basic with this calculator here to get the area to the left. Okay, let's say you wanted to do a question like this, the area that lies between two z-scores. Okay, well this is a little bit more challenging because you can't just put one of them in there, there isn't that option. It's just less than or equal to or greater than. So what we can do is, let's look at this picture here first. So in my picture I have a z-score called z2 and it's to the left than left that, z1 of course to the left, and then z1 in between z1 and z2. Now what we want to do is show that to get this green area we take the z2, I named it z2 because it's over here to the right of this one, okay, we take this one and find the probability, find the area here, and then we subtract off this piece. You see that purple piece matches with that purple piece there, and then you'll get this green piece here. So you start with the one to the right, which is Z2, and then you subtract the one that's to the left of it. So the area of Z2 gets subtracted by the area of Z1, and then you're left with this information right here, which would be in between. So that's what we need to do with stack crunch here. So let's do B, the area that lies between negative 0.19 and 0. So let's find the area, this is Z2, so the, this one is to the left, right? And then 0 is to the right, so I'm going to find 0 first. So compute that. 0 is exactly 0.5, okay? I'm going to put that in my calculator. Subtract the second area, which is the area to the left of this one. So I'm going to put this here, negative 0. 0.19, so that's what I want to subtract, so get my calculator, 0.4246547, I'm going to put them all in so I can get an answer here, and then we round it off to one, two, three, four decimal places, so that would be right here, and there's my answer. So again, to find in-betweens, you always want to get the right one first, find that area, then subtract the left one off, and that will give you an in-between two z-scores. We can also use this calculator to produce a z-score. So remember the z-score is here, probability that x is less than or equal to the z-score. All right, so this would be the probability then. So here it says find the z-score such that the area under the standard normal curve is to the left is 0.83. So I'll write 0 0.83 and then click compute and there's 0.83 to the left and then there's my z-score 0.95. So you can also produce z-scores because this is the probability that x is less than or equal to that z-score. Notice that in a problem like this one where it has probability of x being greater than 41 and not greater than or equal to or less than or equal to for that matter we can still do that in StatCrunch. The greater than doesn't, or greater than or equal doesn't matter, just the greater than is fine, we can still do it. And here we have a new mean and a new standard deviation, so we just bring in the calculator, we change the mean to the 50, we change the standard deviation to the 7, and then we have our 
new normal curve, and now we want to be greater than or equal to. So we have a less than and then greater than. So greater than 41. So we can use that and then hit compute, and then there's the probability, 0 0.9007. Okay, so that will be fine in computing that. And then it gives us our curve as well, and you can see it right here. So we can choose the right normal curve. So in this example, you can figure out what the 86th percentile is of given this mean and this standard deviation. You enter the mean of 50, standard deviation of 7. Now 86th percentile just means 0.86 probability, right? So I put 0 0.86 into the what the probability would equal and that will return the z score point or 57.56. So that would be the 86th percentile located right there.